Hi, welcome to Dreams Recycled Divorce Expert Series. Today I am here with Lou Rodriguez, who is a real estate divorce specialist and best-selling author of Selling Your Home During Your Divorce, How Everyone Can Win. Welcome, Lou. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you for having me. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you became interested in helping divorcees through their divorce? Well, going back a little bit, uh, I've been in real estate since 2001, uh, and I have participated in over 700 plus real estate closing transactions. Wow. How I got interested in the divorce niche is that unfortunately I've had the uh, bad, I, I don't want to say habit because you hope you don't make this a habit, but I've been divorced twice myself. Okay. The, first, the first time I was divorced, uh, in nine, uh, I got married in 1988 as a college student, and that didn't work out for many reasons, which I, I detail in my book, For Sale by Divorce. And then the second time, it ended up in divorce. Both ended up in divorce after only eight months. So, oh, wow. yeah, needless to say, it's something that uh, the, the, the first divorce that I went through did uh, involve marital property. And it was very amicable because I'll share a little bit with you about it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm Hispanic. And so we, we tend to want to do the right thing and circle the wagons. And I happened to make a mistake and get my girlfriend pregnant during college. And I thought that I would do the right thing and get married. Mm -hmm. I got married, but a month after we got married, she lost a baby. It was very, yeah, it was very traumatizing, a very mm -hmm. traumatic time for us. But we had a decision to make. As young as we were, we had a decision to make. The reason why we got married was no mm -hmm. longer there. Right. And so we made it mature we, with help of family and friends. We, we, we thought about it, and we came to the decision to divorce. We had bought a house. I mean, I did everything. I sold my boat, my car. The single life got pushed to the side. Mm -hmm. And now I, I rushed to, to become a father and a partner, and mm -hmm. it didn't work out. Uh, but we had a chance to rectify the situation at only 24 years old, and that's what we did. So mm -hmm. we had marital property. We worked it out with one attorney, by the way, not like it is now. We had one attorney that was my personal friend that was also her friend. So it was very mm -hmm. ample. It was a, a, a different situation. And we worked through it. I ended up staying with the house. I paid her out uh, cash, and that's how I moved that one forward. Okay. The second one here in Florida when I moved here in 1996, I could tell you I'm not sure how I ended up married, but I did. <laughs> and I knew from the beginning that it wasn't going to work, and, and we ended up uh, terminating it after eight months. It okay. took me three years to finalize that divorce from chasing and trying to find the person to, to file and get everything done because, as you know, in a divorce mm -hmm. it takes two. It, it takes, takes two. two. Yeah, it takes two to make it civil and two, and only one to make it uh, not so civil. And I think Absolutely. people forget that. Yep. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, no matter what you do in this business, you're going to run across different types of transactions, whether it's divorce, probate, foreclosure, short sales, you're going to run into them. And uh, you can imagine mm -hmm. after 700 plus closing transactions, I ran into a lot of divorce uh, files. Mm -hmm. It started to be where uh, I started working with a couple of, of attorneys. Mm -hmm. Once you build that relationship with the attorneys and you start working through the different transactions and the different experiences that you had, I wanted to really focus on it. So mm -hmm. in 2013, uh, I took a course that was uh, designed by Carol Ann Wilson, who mm -hmm. is a nationally uh, known expert in the divorce and financial field that she created for financial professionals it allowed mm -hmm. me to take the course as a realtor and I got professionally certified and trained as a real estate divorce specialist. Right. And well, that's great. And because I'm sure like everyone you meet, everyone has a story and everybody wants to tell you their story. So I'm sure a large part of that is not just the transactional part and the financial part. It's also the empathy part that you're dealing with divorcees that need understanding and help. And, um, and I'm, I'm sure you remember from your divorce. I remember from mine, you know, it was bad enough that you had to work with all these other professionals, so-called but the ones that just didn't get it were really frustrating and made it obviously the process much harder than it needed to be. So we're glad that people like you exist. So that's a great thing. So I have some questions for you. 
that I think would be interesting to the divorcees listening and watching. So firstly, um, if you're in a contentious divorce, you really don't even want to see each other. So do you have to show up to closings together? There's a simple answer to that. It's absolutely 100% no. Uh, okay. Once you get to the process where the house was, list, was listed and then sold and you get to the closing table, if there's an issue where the environment is not amicable and they, as, as you well know, some, sometimes these folks cannot stand being in the same room with each other, of mm -hmm. course not. That's my job as the uh, real estate professional to facilitate that transaction between the two divorcing couples and also their family law professionals, whoever they may be dealing with. So mm -hmm. the closing, if I know that they can't be in the same room together, we go over the numbers like I do with all my clients before we close so that it's a simple closing, that nothing is a surprise. Mm -hmm. And I'll go ahead and, and facilitate that with a title company separately. So they don't even have to be in the same state. They could be out of the country and I could still work through the, the title company to close that transaction, whether it be a mail away or, or a remote closer. We would facilitate that so that all the documents would be back in time, close on the closing date and fund as, as, as we had planned it. Well, I'm sure that makes a lot of divorcees feel better, right? If they're worried about that. So that's a good thing. It's one so, of the first questions they ask. Yeah. Okay, so can we list and sell our home before our divorce is final? Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in 2014, I wrote my book, For Sale by Divorce, The Extra Guide to Divorce and Property Division. That book was all about what options you had as it pertained to marital property and the mm -hmm. technical aspects of them all. Now, mm -hmm. the new book, Selling Your Home During Divorce, How Everyone Can Win, is written for people who have already mutually agreed that mm -hmm. selling the house is the best way forward. Mm -hmm. So okay, uh, so answer so answer this. So so let's say I'm married to Fred. I want to sell the house and he doesn't. Can I go ahead and list the house and not tell him? No, absolutely not. Never. Okay, only so only if the two parties agree you can list your house during the process, separation or et cetera, but not, you don't have to wait till your divorce is final. No, you don't have to wait till the divorce is final, but you do have to have mutual agreement because if, they're, if you're both on title and in the state of Florida, even if you're not on title, if you're married and that's a primary residence, you own half of that property. It right. has to be done where everyone signs the closing agreement and the closing document. So it has to be mutual, mutually agreed upon. Okay, should our real estate should our real estate professional be telling people that we're selling the house because of divorce? Absolutely never. You never ever let someone know. It doesn't matter if it's divorce or foreclosure. You don't try to divulge uh, the information of why the house is selling. You don't have to divulge that. In the state of Florida, all you have to divulge is the material condition of the home. Mm -hmm. uh, is the air is there an issue with air conditioning, plumbing, roofing? Those kind of things, they're filled out in a seller's disclosure, but we mm. never write on there that the house is being sold uh, because of divorce. Mm. Okay, so let's say I'm still married to Fred. We've agreed to sell the house, but one of us has moved out. So until that house sells, who's responsible for paying the mortgage and maintenance and the pool and the lawn and everything else? Well, that's one thing that has to be figured out from the very beginning because if you're trying not to divulge that the house is being sold because of the arrest, because of a divorce, then suffice to say, the house has to be maintained. Mm -hmm. So if, you have, if you're using a pool service, if you're using a, a, a lawn and garden service to cut the grass, that has to continue. That's one of the things that has to be explained in the very beginning of this process so that both parties are clear. This mm -hmm. is why communication is very important. All these great questions that you're asking here that's my job to answer them and even present them on their behalf so that they can understand what the process is because we do not want to divulge that the house is being sold because of a pending divorce and mm -hmm. we want to maintain it the best way we can so it's at its optimal showing condition. Okay, so this is a subjective question, but it's actually a question I get asked a lot during my divorce coaching and just talking to a lot of divorcees. So 
is it best to try and hold on to your house or is it best just just to be done with it and split the profit? And obviously the answer is subjective, but what's your thoughts on that? It's very subjective. I, I, I'll get introduced into this transaction by uh, a referring attorney or family law professional after they've mutually agreed that they're going to sell the house. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I've had uh, attorneys, uh, you know, explain the situation and ask me what I thought was best. I might give my personal opinion to them, but uh, to be honest with you, that's something that is going to be resolved be mm -hmm. in either mediation or between the, uh, the attorneys working together to figure out what's the best way because a lot of things are going to come into play for that. Is, mm -hmm. is the house, are, are the bills in the house being maintained by two incomes or one? Mm -hmm. You know, a divorce where there used to be two incomes paying for everything, now they're going to be split. And all mm -hmm. of that's got to be decided. So there's going to be uh, questions about finances and children, other things that are going to lead them down the path to make the right decision. Right. And it is a hard decision because I, a lot of the divorces I speak to, they, they voice that, you know, it's too much change all at once. So they become almost obsessed with holding on to this house and whether they can afford it, not afford it. I feel like sometimes that hasn't really been addressed. So you bring up a good point. You really need to sit down with budget numbers, figures, figure out your new income, your new whatever, and how that's going to play out. Because obviously you don't want to end up receiving the house and then that house going in foreclosure because you're in a lot worse position than you would have been to just get rid of it initially. Absolutely. And what you're talking about is, is finally remove the emotion from it, which right. is, that's probably the hardest part, especially if someone's been in that house for 30 years, they've mm -hmm. had kids, the, all their birthday parties, all their mm -hmm. holidays, everything's been cel celebrated there. There's mm -hmm. an emotional attachment, but mm -hmm. you need to let the professionals that you're surrounding yourself with and the data take you down the right path because it could, like you're saying, make the situation worse. I have seen people uh, negotiate to stay with the home, and then six months later, seven months later, they're having a fire sale because they absolutely cannot afford it, and now mm -hmm. they're in trouble. So now you've extended already a hard time of divorce, of doing with the house, and now you've extended it even longer because you made an emotional decision instead of one of letting the data decide which way is the best way to move forward. Well, and you know how I feel because you know how Dreams Recycled works, but I'm a big believer in letting go of as much stuff as you can and trying to create a whole new life, new memories, new environment. And that obviously includes new house, new furniture and everything that goes along with it. And I feel like often the person who actually ends up in the house regrets it, even if they have the money, because they feel that, you know, somebody else has got new everything and you kind of making do with whatever you had. And so, I don't know, it's a tough decision. Um, what about the real estate fees? So if you take our house and you sell our house for us, who pays you? Uh, the, the sellers only pay the commission. Mm -hmm. So, but when you're talking about fees, I'm assuming that you're talking about the closing costs, like uh, for sellers, uh, closing, uh, lien and title search, uh, mm -hmm. doc stamps, all those things that are associated with, a, with closing a real estate transaction. Mm -hmm. Those that's not really negotiated because that's part of the closing package. So, uh, for instance, when I go and sit in front of a divorcing couple or their attorneys and I'm presenting uh, the listing proposal to them, one of the things that I show them is the net settlement sheet. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it shows clearly all the closing costs, everything that has to be paid to zero that account, including the mortgage, to zero that out to have net proceeds. So, mm -hmm. all of that is part of, of, a, of mutually shared closing costs, they're going to pay that 50-50. Okay. What's going to be negotiated is how the net proceeds are dispersed. And that's something that they'll negotiate. And by the way, don't do not have, that doesn't have to be agreed upon yet to, to sell the house and close it. Okay. Okay. Good point. So, so let's say we've decided to sell this house and so we've come to you how do we decide how much the house is worth? Do you ever come across couples, one of them thinks their house is worth 500 and one thinks it's worth 600 and they both are arguing about what to put it up for and why? Absolutely, <laughs> all the time, all the time. And you know, that's part of the thing that, that, that I try to do. And again, this is, this is a tough thing because you have to read the situation. I like to, if you can believe this, I like to meet 
with a divorcing couple face to face the very first time, if mm -hmm. at all possible. And here's why. Mm -hmm. You just said that you have two or two people that may be arguing about the value. You know, this one told me my neighbor told me my house is worth this. You know how that is when you're getting divorced. You always well, ask even the, not in divorce, people argue about how much your yeah. house is worth. <laughs> exactly. yeah. So I like to sit in front of them because what I do is as I'm showing them the value, I'm showing mm -hmm. them how I using the data. Mm -hmm. I'm using data and I'm pulling up the comps I'm showing them how much their house is worth square feet under air I'm showing them how the absorption rate is affecting the trend is the mm -hmm. market steady I'm showing that I'm educating them mm -hmm. but while I'm doing that and leading them down the path to show what an actual value is they're each seeing each other ask me questions and then they're seeing answer it to the other person then the other one asks me a question and sees me answering I feel and it's been my experience that 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 right there lowers that guard a little bit and shows that no matter how I was introduced to the transaction, like if a, another attorney referred me that doesn't represent them, they see that I'm working for them mutually. Mm -hmm. That the end result is for them to both benefit mutually and equitably. We talk about mm -hmm. communication, how mm -hmm. we're gonna move forward, how we're gonna handle the things. And then I'm going to tell them from how I list it all the way through the closing. And this is this right here takes the guessing out of it. They have in their mind a little bit of a, a of the long view of the 360 degree, uh, 3,000 mile up in the sky view of how this is going to work. And as you know, having been divorced yourself, you already have a ton of things on your mind. You have a lot of things pressing. You're thinking about every little thing. If mm -hmm. I can ease the 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 stress, the level of stress for selling this marital property, and take a lot of that from me and communicate it their stress level is going to be so much better and this process is going to go smoother for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say worst case scenario, you have two people who cannot agree on anything. And at what point does the judge order your house to be sold? Well, first of all, I would hope that it never gets to that because uh, if a judge is ordering a house to be sold, it's because you can't agree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of the process, whether divorcing couples realize it or not, you're trying to gain agreement, but you're in control of the process. Right. So if you control the process, you guys can dictate what's going to happen. Not the attorneys, mm -hmm. you two. Attorneys can help facilitate. And that's part, this is why it's so important to hire the right attorney. Mm -hmm. If that right attorney can make a divorce uh, go smoothly, or they can make it as antagonistic as they want. And there's only one person that wins in that process. That's the attorneys who are billing that, those billable hours. It's, it's being litigated. Right. And if it goes to a judge, a judge is going to decide in his or her mind what is the fair and equitable way to sell that property. What he thinks or she thinks, not what you two think, not what you two agreed upon. So right. and at that point, if you can't agree and you're warring, and the judge has already been told that they need to sell the house and just can't agree on anything, he's going to order the house sold. At that point, you may not even have control over the realtor. He might have an independent realtor that he's going to jam you both with. You don't know the level of competency, the level of professionalism. You don't know anything. And, and that's, that's going to be the, the judgment that uh, the judge puts out, and you're going to have to live with it. Why would you want that? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't, right? And that's exactly the point. Every single piece of the divorce process, whether it's how, you know, your real estate, whether it's your ch child custody, whether it's your asset splitting, doesn't matter what it is, everyone unanimously is better off figuring out by themselves or with a mediator or, you know, if you happen to have a really awesome divorce lawyer. But if it goes to the judge, you, have, you absolutely end up with no control and that's not good for anyone. No, absolutely. So where do we find a really good, uh, like, divorce, I was going to say divorce real estate expert? Like, where do we find people like you? How do we know that they're good? How do we know that they're working in our best interest? Because, you know, you and I both know one of the biggest problems with divorce is finding resources that are awful and actually make everything worse. So where do we find good ones? Well, I think you do it exactly the way you would do. You, you were just going back to what you just said, how important everyone in the divorce process is from, let, let's say, uh, the divorce attorney, a family health professional, a financial planner, uh, a real estate divorce specialist like me. 
Mm -hmm. You have to find someone who is professional, who is competent, but also has transactional experience in their field. By mm -hmm. that I mean is, are you going to hire a brand new divorce uh, attorney? I'm not saying that they're not competent and professional, great, but I would, I would advise to look for someone, first of all, do your due diligence. Research mm -hmm. them online, Google has everything. You can Google me, they can Google you. You can Google any attorney and find out. Look mm -hmm. at, their, at the reviews, talk to people, ask, sit down, if they allow, I like, I only work with, a, with attorneys that give, that provide at least a 20 to 30 minute free consult. If they're looking to charge their, their clients, I don't work with them because I, I feel like you're trying to make money off the situation. Why not hear their situation first, give them a little direction, and then see if you're a mutual fit. You do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. No, because as I say, because I tell, I tell my clients, you know, all these resources that you're using, it's kind of like dating. These are people that you're going to spend a lot of time with, that you have to be able to communicate with. You have to have some mutuality. And not every, no matter how good anyone is at anything, not everybody is a fit for everyone. You know, depending on the circumstances, their personality type, how much hand holding they need. And so, so I say, you know, you look at it kind of like you're dating. You have to talk to these people. They should all be willing to talk to you free. I 100% agree. And you find somebody that you feel comfortable with, who you think that will understand, or does understand, and ultimately will do a good job for you and put your needs first. Absolutely. Uh, the, the two top qualities, though, first are, are experience, transactional experience and competency. Because, of course, you have to, this is a tough field to navigate through. Mm -hmm. The same thing is true about a realtor. You want a person who is a, uh, a, a marketing and listing expert for the competency part of selling the house. Mm -hmm. But then you want someone who has experience dealing with divorcing couples because this is one, this is an arena where there's, uh, this is a constant emotional roller coaster. You're mm -hmm. happy one day, you're mad about the other person the other day. And I get, it's like darts, arrows are coming to me all day. One of the first things that I get when I'm talking to somebody is someone complaining about their spouse. This person mm -hmm. is that, that person is that. I always tell them in the beginning, I understand everything you're going through. I've been divorced twice. I've been there, done that. But my job during this transaction is to be your guide, to take mm -hmm. the stress level off of you help you navigate this all the way through a successful real estate closing transaction. The mm -hmm. only way you get that is with transactional experience and all that information can be found online. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think um, are some things that divorcees forget to ask realtors? Um, you know, I thought about this question and I would tell you that uh, divorcees or anybody else in any business don't know what they don't know. For instance, if, you're, if you've, been divorced, you've been married for 10 years and you're going through divorce, what do you know about divorce? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you, which is why you have to go and interview and talk to an attorney, get that counsel, and get some parameters of what the situation is like. Do your own due diligence. Go to great websites like yours, dreamrecycle.com, and find out. Use those resources and do your own due diligence to find out who you're dealing with, what the situation is. Mm. No, so true. So, so can you tell us a little bit about your books? Sure. Uh, like I said, the first book was in 2014 that I wrote was For Sale by Divorce, The Expert Guide to Divorce and Property Division. When I wrote that book, um, I wanted to, like what we're talking about here, I wanted to uh, let people who are going through divorce or contemplating divorce and own marital property let them know what the options were. You were mm -hmm. asking that question before. And the different things, how to think about the finances, how to think about can you afford the houses. I also worked with some uh, experts in the field in family law and in, uh, uh, with appraising and financial planning. One of them was Carol Ann Wilson. And we discussed the different things that could happen in a transaction to take them down the path where they're going to decide what to do with the house. So it had great reviews. It, it still does, and it was number one for seven months on, on Amazon, so it did really well. Oh, very cool. Well, because it's such, unfortunately, such a prevalent subject, and we really don't even know where to begin. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so this how, book, yeah. That's what I was going to say. So your second book, so explain to me how everyone can win, because clearly that's what everyone wants. Right. Well, the, again, 
this book, what I wanted to do here is answer the question of exactly that and how everyone can win. And the book was written for people who have already mutually decided that they want to sell the house or not that they want to, but that they know this is the agreed upon way we're going to move forward and we're going to sell the house. Mm -hmm. This book explains from the very beginning, from the first phone call, from the, when I first get referred, I explain, I use actual case studies of, of folks that I have worked with and I mm -hmm. explain how I work from the very beginning, how I establish communication, how mm -hmm. I, I'm going to work for it, how we're going to um, sell this house, make it as stress-free as possible that culminates all the way down to a successful real estate closing. This book actually is an instructional manual. If anybody mm -hmm. had this book and was, was thinking about selling their house and they looked at it and they read it, it's a short read. It's 76 pages. It'll probably take you 40 minutes front to back. You mm -hmm. would know exactly how to hire someone that's going mm -hmm. to work for both of you mutually and equitably. Which when you're talking about houses and how much most of them cost nowadays is well worth it. Cause to be informed is everything, right? When you're going through divorce, the more information, the more knowledge you have, the better choices you make on resources, decisions and everything else. And so, so thank you. I'm so glad there are people like you out there helping. And I loved having you as a guest. So thank you. So where can people find you? Uh, you can Google Lou Rodriguez PA. And you can, you can also find you on our divorce directory, which has a link directly to your website. That, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, we haven't spoken about this, but the book, uh, I want to make available for free for anyone on your site. So we got to figure out a way to get the PDF copy so that yeah. they can read. That's the, the whole idea. This book wasn't made to make money. I'm not looking to retire on this. What I'm looking to do is get this into uh, the hands of as many people as possible in that situation. So they have a reference guide. They have a manual that they can use on mm -hmm. interviewing a realtor, on mm -hmm. talking about attorneys, on those kind of things, the different things that can happen. Do you have to be at closing uh, together? Uh, can you close without uh, an agreement on disbursement of net proceeds? All of that is in that book and it's a great resource. Well, no, and it is, and I appreciate that offer. I'm sure our, our community will love it, and we'll figure out a way to do that. So um, thank you very, very much for all the great information and tips you've given us, and we look forward to seeing more of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks.